tell you a little bit about how ESPN are working with um, advertisers across predominantly our digital platforms. So if I focus on the UK, um, it's a core market for us. Uh, we restructured the team um, a few years ago and that was somewhat related to the changes in the industry and, 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 and programmatic being a large part of our business and a very important part. But the realisation that the other side of the business, the direct side of the business, it was potentially going to be more difficult um, to get big rewards on that side. And we've set our team out as a, a solution selling sales team. And I, I think a lot of people say that and, and with, with, with just credibility. But, but for us, what it really means is that we can't and will not go and speak to a client with our standard creds deck. We are a very proactive sales team that go and approach clients with a genuine understanding of what they're trying to do. If we don't have that, we'll go and get that before we go and talk to them about what are those solutions. And those solutions are almost always um, beyond advertising. So that could be a content-led solution, it could be uh, a deep engagement within the site. Uh, we, we can't do that for everyone, but quite often, or most often the conversation will be about, okay, how can we work on a partnership level to develop something that you're maybe not doing with other people? And uh, we feel like our case studies and our ability to do that stands, stands head to head against anyone else in the marketplace. So I'm, I'm not about to say that more people are going to consume in mobile. That's already happened. That, that's been and going. And in fact, we have close to two thirds of our uh, users consuming on mobile here in the UK, also in the US, in the US, and actually around the world. That's that's over 60 million people consuming first on mobile. Now the user experience is now very good, but the advertiser experience isn't particularly good. And I think that's going to be a big change um, over not even three years, but one year, where the solutions, the advertising um, options on mobile, are going to get a lot more sophisticated. Um, and work a lot harder for a platform that is already uh, uh, obviously in high demand for, from consumers. There's still a big, big gap between the amount of money going to mobile and the amount of consumption of mobile and, and, and that will begin to tighten. Another big change to hit the industry over the next few years is, is, is going to be in, in the video space. Again, I said no big surprises here, but what, what I particularly mean by that is You've got a number of different publishers producing a lot of video. We've just had the, the ICC T20 rights in the UK. Um, we, were, we had some high expectations, but we were, we were surprised at just how much video was consumed on the site. In fact, nine days out of 10, it was a record-breaking uh, video consumption on, on the site. But for those shorter video clips, and this particular for sport, the question was how does it affect sport? There's lots and lots of clips out there that are highlight clips or live clips that are snackle bits of, of video content. I can't stick and will not stick 30 second pre-rolls. I won't even stick 15 second pre-rolls in front of that. The user experience is horrible. So I think we're going to see a lot of different lengths of video um, pre-roll ads and, 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 and video pre-roll being created for video consumption as opposed to TV ads cut down. And the final thing is environment and engagement. And what I mean by that is uh, on, on the environment side, I think there is going to be a flight back to quality. Um, there's lots of very good sites out there, but there is, I think, going to be a bit of a shrinkage of the market. Not every site can be a destination site. And I think we're going to see the destination sites begin to get a higher share of the total spend. And then on the, on the engagement side, this is a bit of a hope as well as I think something that might happen, that the, we move away from just pure reach to more of an engagement um, metric for um, why clients spend. Um, that would be music to our ears as, as we have the highest engagement of, of any sports site. The question is how do I see or, or think of the UK digital market compared to other markets across Europe? Um, I, I work in many markets across Europe, I don't know them all. Absolutely not, um, but I do know some, so I've, I've, I've some idea of what I'm talking about. I think the UK market, without question, is an extremely advanced and sophisticated digital market, and, and, and I would argue at times the most sophisticated digital market in the world. I think our US colleagues would have something to say about that, but I think that is true in, in, in many cases. I think Western Europe um, was playing a bit of a catch-up game. They have caught up 
again very very sophisticated and then some other developing markets we're still seeing some very very high rates of growth but but digital is now in the mainstream whereas before it was okay encouraging clients to have digital on the plan that's no longer the case it's on the plan but they're still going through that period of growth but the catch-up is much much quicker quicker because they see what we have done in in the uk and some other regions and, and, and learn um, much quicker I mean, it's part of Google's culture to be inventive and creative. I mean, it's a, it's a company founded on the basis of radical change and doing things differently. So in the, in the creative space, you know, it's, it's fundamental that we do things that capture people's imagination because just talking about technology is not interesting enough. You have to talk about what people get out of the technology.